So up next is Bill Cease with the Department of Environmental Quality. Bill obtained a degree in geology and geophysics from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. He then spent 16 years as an environmental consultant in the Midwest and Northern High Plains region. Bill joined the Department of Health here in North Dakota in the Groundwater Protection Program in February of 2014 and was named the Spill Investigation Program Manager on August 1st of 2015. Bill currently serves as the Department of Environmental Quality Representative on the State Emergency Response Committee and the Department of Emergency Services Advisory Committee. Bill's going to talk about the DEQ program around land treatment of hydrocarbon contaminated soils. All right. Good morning. So yeah, um, for those of you who know me well, you know, realize I was a consultant for about 16 years before I joined the state. Uh, working in throughout the upper Midwest and the, the Intermountain region that, and I'd utilized land application of hydrocarbon impacted soils for years. It, were, it was used in Minnesota, Wisconsin, other states around the, upper, the Midwest. And it was a common tool that we used for remediation. I've been a fan of it for a long time. I've argued for it here in North Dakota since the day I became the program manager. It's taken nine years, but we finally got it. Um, so basically, this is what we call land farming or, you know, the, the applying it to the soil. So what can be used? I mean, that's a good question. How we're going to go through it? What's the application process and everything? So soils impacted with API light or medium gravity crude oil. So the real heavy crudes can't be used in this Um Obviously, so the light, the lighter ends, the the your your Bakken crude, it will be fine in it. Natural gas condensate works really well with this thing. Gasolines, diesel fuel, your refined products, fuel oils, and stuff like that are are good uh, candidates for land application. More importantly, let's look at what can't be used in here. Also, soils contaminated contaminated with heavy crude oil, obviously can't be used. So it's contaminated with anything that's classified as a hazardous waste uh, under North Dakota rules. Soils with an EC greater than six millimoles per centimeter or an SAR greater than 12, <clears throat> basically saying brine impacted soils can't be used. This will not remediate salt. Soil and solid waste materials unsuited for any kind of land application, obviously. That's the permitting. Product, pro, uh, application process. It's uh, two pages. Uh, so we kept it uh, as easy as we can. The This was put together by our waste management division. The first iteration of this uh, came with uh, Scott Raddick was still working there. Uh, they sent it to me to be reviewed. The whole permit and everything sent it to me to be reviewed. My response back to them was, You've made it so complicated and so restrictive that nobody's ever going to use it. We need to simplify this. So they came back and with uh, Ch Chuck Hyatt and uh, Diana Trussell and myself, we kind of worked this out and we got what we think is a simpler process. Uh, still going to need some information though. So the minimum amount of information we're going to need from you is obviously the operator's you know, name, address, phone number, email, and all that. The landowner's information, that same man, whose land are you going to be applying this on? The site location, we need the, the township range section and at least the quarter section of it. We want to see a topo map and a soil survey map. So uh, NRCS map of the site, so we know what kind of soils are out there. And a topographic map so we can see the you know, ground contours. Schematic diagram of the site, including your uh, water control features. And those are going to be berms or ditches or anything like that that's in there. And the estimated soil volume that you're going to be applying. Because that's the, the minimum we need. So well, a little bit more in there. Project the date of application. When, when do you plan on applying this? Well, we will have some restrictions on when you can apply it. Uh, site and soil characteristics obviously can be obtained. And we'll get into those a little bit more detail. Obviously, you can contain that from NRCS as well. The land application procedure, how you're going to be applying this. And then uh, a sampling and reporting schedule. And that's kind of, we'll, we'll dictate a little bit of that. 
but then any previous history of waste or dis uh, disposal at the site, has it been used? Any previous spills at that site, anything else? So the site and soil characteristics, as I you know, mentioned before, we're looking for relatively level areas, uh, nothing greater than a 6% maximum slope. Uh, we wanna know the depth of water out there. Um, quite often you can get that through the, uh, the State Water Commission or what are they now, the Department of Water Resources. Um, we want a minimum of three feet for a season high, seasonal high water table. So that's uh, there. Permeability, uh, less than two inches per hour for the soil permeability. Uh, pH, we're, uh, we want to see neutral to slightly alkaline soils. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing more acidic than a 6.5, which is pretty much neutral. Nutrients, what are the, what's the moderate, to, you know, we want to see moderate to high levels of fertility or organic matter out in that soil. Uh, Cause that's going to give you the, the biodiversity, the microbes to help break down this material, the hydrocarbons that you're putting in there, make sure there's adequate soil nitrogen and phosphorus levels. And then we prefer cropland to rangeland or anything like that, just because of the, the nature of the soils and the use of it. What's excluded? Where can't you put it? Within 200 feet of surface water or 200 feet of any stream. And when I, I separate the stream, because if you go onto a USGS topo map, you'll see solid blue and dashed blue lines. We count both of those. So if it's an intermittent stream, uh, you, we still can't, we can't be within 200 feet of it. Because uh, a lot of these, if they're, you know, a lot of your crude oils and that could take a couple of years for the whole breakdown to, to occur. And the intermittent stream is going to be flowing in that period of time. Within 500 feet of an occupied dwelling, you can get a variance from that from the landowner. If the landowner signs off on that, uh, they're okay with it as long as it's on his land. Uh, you know, we we somebody brought that up yesterday. Our our keynote speaker brought up yesterday. You know, you know, wind turbines are on the back of one guy's property, but right next to the house of another guy's property. Well, obviously. We can't have that either here. So within 100 feet of property boundary, uh, again, unless the, the adjacent landowner has signed off on it and agrees to it, within, within a wellhead protection area, kind of should go without saying, within 250 feet of a private well or within 1,000 feet of a drinking water well, which within... 1,000 feet of a public well, you're hopefully you're within a wellhead protection area anyway. But other excluded areas within the corporate uh, limits of any municipality, can't have it within the city, got to have it out in the country. Within 50 feet of a 100-year floodplain, um, don't get too much of that here around here. But where, where the depth of an aquifer is uh, less than 20 feet, and that is a, you know, that, that's a drinking water aquifer. Uh, that three feet I mentioned before is any surficial aquifer. Where the primary subsurface material is sand or gravel to a depth of about 20 feet. On land that has an average slope of greater than 6%, brought up before. Any area that adversely affects wildlife, recreation, or aesthetic value. That's, of course, is subjective to interpretation, of course or any area containing threatened or endangered species. Luckily, we don't have many threatened or endangered species here in North Dakota. Um, probably the only one we're going to run into is the Dakota skipper. So, so what is the procedure for it? So you want to apply when you want to apply it when the land is tillable, because you will be tilling this in. So anywhere between April 1st to November 1st as a general time frame. Obviously with North Dakota, you know, winters and spring, that can vary quite a bit, but in general, those, that time frame, uh, we want to see what the stormwater control is. So we need ditches or berms to divert or contain stormwater. You want to make sure stormwater can't flow onto or off of your, of your, uh, land application area, uh, should be applied no more than four inches thick. 
And uh, that can, like I said, that can vary by the, the nutrient, you know, amount of nutrients available in the soil. And with a loading rate of less than 2% or 20,000 parts per million at the time. So when we put it, apply it at your concentration, you're spreading it out. We, want to, we don't want to see more than 20,000 parts per million in any given location. Uh, till into the upper, you'll be tilling it into the upper four to six inches of the soil. Um, and you will till it four times during the season. Because uh, the more you till that, the better it works. You got to keep it moving, got to keep moisture into it. And being that irrigation, if needed in dry conditions. The bacteria need oxygen, they need moisture, they need water in order to work and to break down the hydrocarbons. Um, they love to eat it, but they need the right conditions for it. So that's why the tilling is required and obviously got to keep it wet enough. And then you're going to add do active land treatment until we reach a part, uh, level of 10 parts per million for GRO and 100 parts per million for DRO. That's a little more restrictive than what we normally have for cleanup. Um, but it should be in, in GRO, it should be easily attainable. So we're going to be doing, requiring you to do some sampling. Obviously, you, we can, uh, we allow composite sampling on this. Um, if you're doing less than 10 cubic yards of material that you're spreading, we don't require any samples. 10 to 50, you can see the chart up there, 10 to 51. Up to 2,000 to 4,000 cubic yards, we'll want to see five composite samples collected, and then uh, one additional sample for each, for each additional 2,000 cubic yards of material. And that's, we're looking at the soil fertility in that. So this is, um, it's going to be a com combination of sampling your stockpile, what you're putting on, so we know what, what's going on to it, and also the soil that you're going to be applying it to, so we know it's there. Again, looking at the soil for uh, fertility, we're gonna do composite sampling of the upper six inches of that soil, because uh, that's what you're tilling this material into, and then monitoring it three times a year, per year in June, August, and October. Of course, that's all going to vary by when you apply this. Remember, you can apply it anywhere from April to November, April 1st to November 1st. So obviously, you know, if you're applying it, you know, in September, you're only going to be you know, doing your October monitoring for that first year. We want to see an annual report by March 1st. So what that annual report will contain is the origin of the impacted soil, where did it come from, type of petroleum contamination that's in it. Is it crude oil? Is it gasoline? Is it a refined product? What is it? The date the soil was received, and that is not necessarily the date of the spill, but the date, you know, you've collected it and made that determination that you want to land apply it. Uh, the, quantity of the, the quantity of the soil, how much you applied, the date the soil was spread, and the date it was tilled, the date it was initially tilled in, and then any other tilling dates that you did. Document and, and uh, document and, uh, any applied amendments. Did you add anything to this? Have you done anything? You know, did you irrigate? When did you irrigate? You know, did you add, add any additional, you know, supplemental nutrients to it? What did you do? Any sampling results? You want to see all those, of course. Sample location map, where were you collecting these? Um, obviously we're allowing composite samples, so you can just kind of give a, a general box area of where your composite came from. And then a uh, summary of any complaints from the landowner. You know, are there any odors where you're not, you know, any complaints that the landowner had about regarding this and then what you did to address those complaints. Then any conclusions and recommendations you have uh, for the, for additional monitoring, additional work, whether you think it should be, you know, we're, we're done with that, whatever. So how much will it cost? That's the big question a lot of you will have, I'm sure. And that's the fees for it. Uh, if you're between zero and 500 cubic yards of material, there's no fee for the application. There's no application fee for it. Uh, if you're going from 500 to 1,000 cubic yards, it's $500 application fee. In greater than a thousand cubic yards, it's one thousand. So, and the links to these, okay, are basically there. There's actually the application there, 
Guideline seven is, you know, just the guidelines for applying for doing the application and then the, the general permit that's out there for it. So uh, that's pretty much it in a wrap with the list. Is there any questions on this? Yes. Uh, the turnaround is we, we can turn this around pretty quick. We can usually turn around within definitely within a week, quite often within a few days. Um, you know, the only thing what time we run into it is if, you know, obviously myself, you know, well, and myself in some cases or whichever program is dealing with this in the event of a spill, it would be myself and waste management, probably Diana Trussell reviewing the application. The only thing you're going to run into is I'm stuck out in the field for a week on the spill site. It may get delayed a little bit on that, but usually we can get it turned around within a few days.